Good evening, this is Deborah Cargill coming to you live from Walking by Faith Ministry. And we're going to do a study in Hebrews 5. Hebrews 5, verse 1. For every high priest taken from among men is ordained for men in things pertaining to God, that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins. The high priest was a representative of the people to God. God spoke to the people through the, the Urim and Thummim, which was behind the breastplate worn by the high priest. This was symbolic of God speaking to the people through the heart of the high priest. The people had no direct contact with God at this time, but were represented by the high priest. Verse two, who can have compassion on the ignorant and on them that are out of the way for that he himself also is compassed with infirmity. Moses was gone to the top of the mountain to receive the Ten Commandments from God. Aaron and the people decided that he was not coming back and they did this terrible thing. We find that Aaron's second oldest sons were no better than he was. God killed them for their sin. Leviticus 10 and 1 it says, And Nadab and Abel, the sons of Aaron, to either of them his censer, and put fire therein, and put incense thereon, and offered strange fire before the Lord, which he commanded them not. And Numbers 3, verse 4, And Nadab and Abel died before the Lord, when they offered strange fire before the Lord. In the wilderness of Sinai, and they had no children. Elijah and Ethemar ministered in the priest's office in the sight of Aaron, their father. Most people believe this strange fire that they offered was that they were drunk when they made their offering. But this is not in the Bible, however. Some of the other sons of high priests sinned and were killed. But we have already covered that here. It is enough to say that these were not perfect men. Verses 3 and verse 4. And by reason here, there hereof he ought, as for the people, so also for himself, to offer for sin. And no man taketh his, this with honor unto himself, but he that is called of God, as was Aaron. So we see. We see that even the Christians must be called to be God's children. The Old Testament scripture shows that not even a king could take it upon himself to minister in the temple. God is the only one who's been ordained someone to minister. I will give one New Testament scripture on this and then go on. John 3 verse 27. John answered and said, A man can receive nothing except it be given from him from heaven. Verse 5, so also Christ glorified not himself to be made a high priest, but he that said unto him, Thou art my son, today have I begotten thee. We can easily see from this word, we can easily see from this that not only are we all the creation of the word of God, but that word took on the form of flesh and dwelt among us as Jesus Christ. The Son of God. He took the name of Jesus for his stay on the earth because Jesus means Savior. Verse 6 As he says also in order in another place, Thou art a high priest forever after the order of Meshachedach. Abraham paid tithes to the high priest. The high priest served Abraham the same elements that Jesus served the disciples. At the last step of bread and wine. Okay, going on to the next part of Hebrews 5. We continue. We go to verse 7. Who is the days, who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him? from death and was heard in that he feared. 
This is speaking of Jesus who took on the form of flesh for his stay here on the earth. It was necessary that he be in the flesh a man, that he could be our substitute on the cross. The flesh of Jesus was from his mother Mary, and it was normal flesh as you and I have. The spirit within the flesh was the spirit of God. The Holy Spirit had covered over, hovered over Mary. It was <coughs> with a virgin, and she conceived of the Holy Spirit of God. This scripture above is speaking of the time when Jesus went to the garden of Gethsemane, with Peter, James, and John prayed to his father for that to cut past from him. Gethsemane means an oil press. The garden is full of olive trees. This press is used to make olive oil. Olive oil is symbolic of the Holy Spirit. I believe that Jesus Christ was strong and ready to face his horrible death on the cross, but his body was weak, and he came to the garden to pray to strengthen his body for his to suffer. Verse 8, though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. Christ's obedience was also necessary that he would fulfill all righteousness and thus proved to be the perfect sacrifice to take the place of sin. He was the perfectly righteous one who righteousness would be imputed to sinners. We are told that it is better to obey than to sacrifice in 1 Samuel 15, verse 26. Verse 9, in being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation to all them that obey him. We know that Jesus is the only one who ever lived on this earth completely free from sin. He took our sin on his own body that we might take on his righteousness. He is our salvation. Verse 10. Called of God a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. <laughs> Excuse me, y'all. He, he, Melchizedek. He, that meant name here in the Old Testament is the same name. The two were the same. The one Melchizedek here and Melchizedek in the Old Testament is the same name. They were spelled differently, <coughs> excuse me, because they were originally written in different language. This Melchizedek has been a contro controversy for thousands of years. In the next few chapters, here we will go into detail about this. Oh, Carla. Uh, we're in Hebrews 5, um, verse 11, of whom we have many things to say and had to be other, seeing ye are dull, dull of hearing. Until the Hebrews obeyed the revelation they had received and obtained eternal salvation. Additional teaching about the Messiah's Michelin priesthood would be of no profit to them. Jesus had said before, seeing they will not see and hearing they will not hear. This seems so strange, but God does not want to win them to him through their great intelligence. He wants them to believe in their heart. Even the disciples did not understand the meaning of the parables that Jesus spoke in until Jesus explained them. Remember, this letter is written to the Hebrews. To understand the things of God, the Holy Spirit must reveal the meaning. Unless you, they could see it with their eyes, they would not believe. If you, can't, if you can see something, it takes no faith to believe. Faith is the opposite of fact. We see in Matthew 13, verse 15, for this people's heart is waxed gross, and their ears are full of, are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. Verse 12, 
for when for for when for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as of need of milk and not of strong meat. The Hebrews had the Old Testament to guide them, but they did not truly understand what they were saying, and they turned down the Lord of glory. I will give you a few scriptures of scripture of, of in Paul's words on this. First Corinthians chapter three, verse one through thirteen. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto, as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto you were not able to bear it. And neither yet now are ye able, for ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envying and strive in division, are ye not carnal and walk as men? Verse 13 For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is faith. The only way that we will not be deceived is by reading our Bible every day. Pray that the Holy Spirit reveal it to you and try every spirit by the word of God. Verse 14, but strong me belongs to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Jesus invited unbelieving Jews to the salvation perfection, which came only through following him in faith, which is found in Matthew 19, verse 21. Paul wrote that those who had come to Christ by faith were thereby mature and able to receive the wisdom of God, 1 Corinthians 2, verse 6. The more you read and study the word, the stronger you will become. This is an hour of great deception. We must not be deceived. Matthew 24, 24. For there shall arise false Christ, false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, and so much that if it were possible, they will deceive the very elect. The only way to not be deceived is to stay in the word of God. First John 4, verses 1 through 3. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirit, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into this world. Hereby know ye the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is coming to the places of God, and every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is coming to place is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, wherefore ye, whereof ye have heard that it should come. And even now already is it in the world. So many are trying to say Jesus was no more than a man when he walked on the earth. Do not believe that he was God with us. Amen. Emmanuel, he was God the word who took on the flesh of man to save us from an eternity in hell. He paid our debt to God when he shed his blood that we might live. Praise God. Thank you for joining me for our uh, Bible study discussion tonight in Hebrews chapter 5. And I will be back in the morning for my Bible morning devotion. God bless you. I love you. Have a great evening. Be blessed in the Lord.